Hey, I'm gonna get right to the point on this one. So, when I started out as a freelance videographer 13 years ago, I bought, I knew I was gonna need a wireless solution, right? Something that I could put a lapel mic on people, that I could run and gun where needed. So, at that point, the job that I had, I had only dealt with Sony products in that arena and they were fantastic, so I just stuck with it. And have been amazingly happy, I bought the Sony UTX-B2 wireless transmitter. I actually don't know the model number of this actual lapel mic, but it's the one that came with it. And the companion receiver, the Sony URX-P2. Again, it's UHF solution, so a little bit old school but served me incredibly well and still sounds fantastic to this day. But when the DJI mic, actually it was a while after it came out, but when I found out it existed and it was time to upgrade, I think I had a uh, instance where I needed to mic up two people. So I put the lavalier in between both of them and you just kind of get subpar audio between the both. So I needed a good two person solution and the DJI mic came with two receivers, I'm oh, sorry, two transmitters and the receiver. So I got this, it was around COVID and it was amazing. The DJI mic is so versatile. It's maybe a little pricey. This was, I think over 500 bucks. So even compared to that, not terribly pricey, uh, but I could mic up two people. I could, it came with the interface built in so I could hook it up straight to my computer, straight up to my iPhone. And around COVID times, this was a godsend because I was doing some zooms here and there. So when I saw that the DJI Mic 2 was, again, coming out or fairly recently came out, there's probably a million videos out there about this already, uh, I jumped on it. And it just got here. I ordered it on Wednesday. It got here on Friday. So again, B&H is amazing. Do not ever count them out, especially if you're more prone to buy from Amazon. I think I'm more prone to buy from B&H at this point. Not sponsored, just FYI, that's what's going on. So when I got the DJI mic, I did some audio tests and the Sony still came back better. Again, it's more of a professional solution. So that was not too surprising, but when it came to the versatility of the DJI, I was willing to deal with a little bit of quality loss. For that reason, I hung on to the Sony, but with the new DJI Mic 2, and we'll do a quick unboxing before I get to the actual testing, because that's what I wanna tell you right now. I actually am going to run it through. I, I would do it anyway, so I figured why not put it in a video. So when I say I'm trying to get right to the point, that's what the point will hopefully be, is what does the DJI Mic sound like compared to this? compared to the DJI Mic 2. So let's find out. But let's unbox it first, obviously. So the other thing I should mention is that when I got the DJI Mic, the DJI lavalier did not exist. So there were a couple of videos out there of people that ran a bunch of different tests with a bunch of different lavaliers. I ended up buying the Shure Motive, I believe it is, MVL which the, I don't have the packaging with me, but this is what it is. And uh, with the DJI mic, you never know when somebody, including myself, will object to having the pack, you know, the actual device with the logo and everything just right front and center on their shirt. So I had some lavalier mics just in case, but honestly, they never sounded as good, even anywhere near as good as my Sony stuff. The, the mics themselves sounded pretty darn good. So I was happy enough with it, but like I said, for that reason, I didn't lose the Sony mic. So my thinking is with the DJI Mic 2, some of the improvements are so good that I'm pretty sure I can ditch my Sony's finally. And I'm hoping the fact that they have their own lavalier solution is going to be one of those reasons. So uh, the other reason that makes me pretty sure I'm going to be able to do it is 32-bit float internal. And I had been looking at those, those little zoom lavalier mics that, oh, this one actually comes with the case too. The silica. Uh, but I had been looking at the, that's everything in the box. This is nice. Oh, more silica. The DJI Mic 1 does not come with a case at all. This is $100 more than the DJI Mic 1, so 
Uh, it's not without its price here, but uh, oh, the, the Zoom F2, which is a 32-bit float uh, personal mic with a lapel mic included that doesn't even have audio level because they say 32-bit float. And for the most part, I've found that to be true. It's one of the reasons this was kind of an instant sell is that 32-bit float. When I saw that this had the, it has 32-bit internal. So basically both of these packs could be comparable to that Zoom F2 just all on its own. Uh, but I'm also going to run, when I do these tests, I'm going to run it through, again, like I usually do, with the different lapel mics, although the Sony does not cross over, it's attached for good. They'll have that little screw in connector sometimes. But I'll do tests with both lapel mics, the internal recorder on the device, and uh, through the transmitter. So those will be the three tacks I take. But let's get everything out of the bag here first. So it comes with windscreens again, fantastic. Put those back. It comes with, that's the other windscreen. It comes with a USB-C cable for charging. It's great. Already got a bunch of those. Just a normal jumper, it looks like. Probably for the receiver at times, although I bought my own uh, mini to XLR to go into my F6, which is what I usually record on. So that's the case. Very high quality, very nice, but who cares? Again, uh, let's make this short. This is, oh, you want to see the documentation? Somebody said in my head. Uh, but this appears to come with, what are these, stickers? Okay. Quick start guide. That thing. Safety guidelines. I'm very curious what's in here. It is a DJI sticker. These are all DJI stickers. Interesting. For now, we'll put that all back in the package and save it for later. Let's get into the actual device here. Looks like basically the same operating system as the DJI Mic 1. But, you know, I thought this was just going to be... Wow, that's slick. <laughs> I thought it was just a darker design, uh, but it is got a little bit of the see-through casing on it. The receivers already connect right when you open them. Uh, this was incredibly useful, the whole magnetic ecosystem that they use. The receiver saw the most changes, it looked like. It's got a physical wheel on it now. All right, so that's kind of the normal screen that you would see on the DJI Mic 1. A little bit bigger than the Mic 1. Looks like it's got, oh, nice. So it's got a little automatic or built-in cover for the adapter spots, which the adapters are both here. Looks like it's still Lightning and USB-C, which used to be iPhone and uh, Android, obviously. But now with the most recent iPhones, you're looking at USB-C more often than not. So that's cool, keeps the contacts protected. Beautiful. Let's open up the lapel mic and then get to some actual audio tests, which if that's what you're here for, you've already skipped ahead to it. So what do you need me for? Uh, don't worry, the silica is in here. Uh, it comes with a little manual. Great. Again, I usually just download those. Uh, the if, if you were one of the ones that bought the Shure mics, it was your best, uh, at least I found, the best option as far as sound quality went, but it wasn't ever perfect. It was just the best you could do because it appeared, I don't know if it was the preamps on the little receiver or on the little transmitters or what, but never never sounded great. Luckily, I didn't have to use them professionally. This, so one of the strange things about the Shure is this wire seemed a little, not just thin, thin can be fine, but it seemed almost brittle. Like it didn't seem like there was a lot of uh, rubber to it. And this automatically feels better than that. So not much to the unboxing of that, but again, rest of this video should just be audio test. So let's see how it all sounds. 
So to talk a little bit about the methodology I'm gonna use at the very least, and I'll still keep it pretty dead simple. Again, this is just what I do whenever I get a new device, certainly a microphone, so might as well put it out there. But normally, as you would have seen in the video so far, I have the DJI mic clipped pretty close to the collar, and it's going to the receiver that is going through a mini headphone into an XLR into the Zoom F6 field recorder, which is a brilliant field recorder with a very low noise floor, but I know that not everybody's gonna have that. And also, I feel like the more steps you introduce, the more likely you are to introduce some noise, which actually with the transceiver setup, you may never notice because I never shut up, does actually have a little bit of noise in it like this. And maybe you couldn't hear that, but what I'm going to do is stick with that setup for now because with the Sony, it only works that way. It doesn't have a built-in audio interface. When I start comparing the DJI mic against the DJI mic 2, we will go directly into the computer and we'll talk about that then. But for now, just so I can compare the Sony, and again, just so I can figure out if it's something I wanna hold on to for any special use case scenarios, I'm going to compare them all with the receiver going directly into the Zoom F6 with the lapel mic. So I'm also gonna switch from what I have set up right now, what you saw in the video, which just has the mic clipped right to my shirt. I'm going to switch to the lapel mic. It's going to be the DJI lapel mic and the Shure lapel mic with the DJI mics. But again, the Sony will only receive with its own. Actually, I might, I could probably put the DJI and the Shure lapel microphones into the Sony. Boy, this is a tongue twister. But the Sony lapel mic will not fit because it has a screw top uh, into the DJI mic one or two. So there'd be a little bit of finagling going on there. But for now, that's what we're going to compare. So you've already been listening to this, the DJI mic one with the onboard microphone just clipped at my throat. This is what that sounds like with the Shure Motive MVL omnidirectional lavalier that I bought to use with the DJI Mic 1 because it seemed to have the best results at the time. There was not a DJI lavalier to use until now. So now you're hearing the actual DJI lavalier microphone for Mic 2, as it's listed on B&H at the very least. So I would hope, and I'm not gonna know yet, that there is a little bit of quality improvement between the Shure and the DJI lavalier made for the DJI product, even though, again, this is through the DJI Mic 1. But this is the DJI lavalier microphone on the DJI Mic 2 now. So I skipped the Shure lavalier because it turns out it does not play with the DJI Mic 2 for whatever reason. I could not get a signal. so. Let's just say for the rest of these tests, the Shure Motive MVL Omnidirectional Lavalier Mic is down for the count. Again, does not work with the DJI Mic 2. But now that we're on the DJI Mic 2, I need to mention some things real quick before we do anything else. So out of the box, I had to manually turn off the low cut filter and the automatic noise reduction and turn on 32-bit float recording. So the low cut filter is pretty standard for just about every mic out there. The DJI Mic 1 has it too, for that matter. It'll filter out a bunch of low frequency noise, ambient sound, can be super useful, obviously, especially if you know the math. I think it's 100 hertz and below is usually what it catches. But the automatic noise reduction is something that's new for the DJI Mic 2. And honestly, I don't know that anybody knows the math beyond the marketing just yet for that. But why you would want those both turned off is because you can typically get better results from a software solution after the fact, after you bring it onto your computer and you're doing all your sweetening there. So I don't know why you would have those both on at the same time, it seems bonkers to me, let alone having them turned on out of the box. So 32-bit float makes a little bit more sense turned off out of the box because not everybody's gonna use it. It does affect battery life and file size, but don't ask me to explain 32-bit float, unfortunately. I can tell you that it is high quality audio that is just a dream to work with. I feel like the, the catchphrase you'll hear most often is that you don't have to worry about levels. There's no such thing as clipping, which kind of, it certainly does seem magical when you pull it into the editor and you're able to bring down the waveform. It seems kind of out of thin air sometimes, but 
you still need to pay attention to what you're doing. But the thing I need to mention when it comes to the DJI Mic 2 is that if you'll notice, all the marketing is very careful to say internal 32-bit float recording. And if you look at the manual, it also says, quote, the transmitter can independently record in 32-bit float because obviously when you're using the receiver, it depends on what you have the receiver plugged into. And I don't know where the line is drawn there. Obviously I'm using the F6, like I mentioned, and it does record 32-bit float. And I can say that I have pulled in files into the editor before and been able to bring down those levels, again, seemingly out of thin air. So when I say I don't know where that begins and ends, it's because you can also set the levels on the receiver and the transmitter for that matter. So I think if it's clipping there, there's probably not much you can do after the fact. I don't know if it's gonna send that unaltered you know, non-clipping file across the, the airwaves into whatever you're recording if you're using 32-bit float. So again, <laughs> don't ask me. The, the Zoom does record in 32-bit float, but you're gonna see later on when I have the receiver going directly into the computer and I'm using an application called Audio Hijack, it records in 32-bit little slash signed, which refers to little Indian and signed versus unsigned. So. Um, <laughs> I promise I tried. That's all I can say. I could not find an easy answer. There's a bunch of complicated ones. I found a ton of those, but nothing that I could explain to you or understand within the space of, of preparing for this video. So let's just say with audio, looking stuff up only goes so far anyways, because by the end of the day, you just need to hear what it sounds like. It's why I'm doing these tests in the first place. So, all right, keeping all of those things in mind, let's round out the last of the lavalier tests, which brings us to the Sony, my old UHF solution, the UTX-B2 transmitter, along with the URX-P2 receiver. So hopefully the DJI Mic 2 sounds better than this and I can feel pretty good about nixing this entire setup. And since this is kind of the last use case for this setup, we will retire the Sony option for now and just compare the DJI Mic 1 and 2 from here on out. So we're back to the original quote unquote setup that I had at the beginning of this video with the DJI Mic 1. But like I said, or hinted at at the very least, this does actually introduce a little bit of noise if you listen. So what I found is if I go directly through the built-in interface, again, it's got those attachments, both the DJI mics do, where you can put on the USB-C attachment. It will be here. There's also a lightning one that we won't be using because I'm not going to do any phone tests for this go around. But I will run the DJI mic receivers directly into my computer and capture them by way of an application called Audio Hijack. Because if you listen now, Hopefully you heard a bit of the noise drop out in the middle of that long pause as I switched recording methods, but you may have also heard my water heater and or who knows any number of cars passing by. So your environments may differ. Again, this appeared to be the way to get the cleanest signal from the devices into the computer. And again, I'll share the settings by way of another really cool app actually called Media Info. So another recommendation as far as that goes, but as always, nothing sponsored just yet. I promise I'll let you know if that ever happens, but uh, patreon.com slash Ryan underscore runs underscore. So this is still the DJI mic one with the onboard microphone. And this is the DJI mic one again with the Shure Motive lavalier microphone. And this is the DJI mic one with the DJI lavalier microphone for mic two, which does work with the DJI mic one. But this is the DJI mic two now with the DJI lavalier. And this is closer to what I would use in a client situation. Not that I don't like the DJI logo, but so many companies now it seems, I don't know if it's the, the streaming outlook has gotta be what it is, but they're real focused on that brand recognition. And in the professional space, that's usually something you want to avoid. You want to avoid any distractions or logos that aren't the, the business that you're making the video for. In fact, I should probably be doing tests with the lavalier mic completely out of frame. Sometimes they don't even want that in the shot. 
but for these it's just been right on my collar so keep that in mind and again since the shore lavalier does not work with the dji mic 2 let's just take off this dji lavalier and hear how the built-in mic sounds for the dji mic 2. now this is the setup i would most often use for videos like these on ryan runs where you've seen me do the unboxings and it's a little bit more useful to have something right on my collar rather than have to worry about having the SM7B in the frame or something like that. So this could be very useful for me as well if it continues to sound good. And I would hope sounds better than the DJI Mic 1, at least, obviously. And by the way, if this all sounds incredibly confusing, it is, but I'll try to make it easier. I'm going to put samples of all of these arrangements into a complete downloadable package that you should be able to see a link for in the description for either this video or over on the Patreon. Because also for a video, it just is not tenable for me to put every single file up against every other file. It's also just very tedious for both of us. So if that is something you're looking to do, again, just go find that downloadable and you can compare one-to-one -one however you want. All right, let's get to the finale. I wanna see how the internal recording holds up between these two mics. Last time I tested the DJI Mic 1, when I first had it, I compared the internal recording against everything else. And it turned out the internal recording, again, using just the transmitter, was inferior to pretty much anything I had set up using the receiver. So let's start there with the DJI Mic 1 and the DJI Lavalier. Again, recording internally, that's what this is. And we can see how this directly compares to the internal 32-bit float recording on the DJI Mic 2 with the DJI Lavalier. So if this sounds great, then pretty much game over. I could use this setup for client work, not even worry about the receiver, but honestly, I'm kind of expecting this to be like the DJI Mic 1 in the respect that this is cool to have, but usually everything else through the receiver tends to sound better. But if this can compete with the Zoom F2, like I mentioned, that's kind of amazing anyway. You've got two 32-bit personal recorders just ready to go at any time, so. Okay, let's remove the DJI lavalier now and see what the built-in microphone on the DJI Mic 2 sounds like now. Still recording internally, Still 32-bit float, so with any luck, this also sounds pretty good. But just for the sake of being thorough, let's see how this sounds right up against the internal recording with the built-in microphone on the DJI Mic 1. So I don't think I ever used this particular setup for any video ever, especially after making the comparison and finding out that pretty much every other setup sounded better, at least a little bit. So. Let's end the entire thing on this. Obviously, if you're not directly comparing some of these to each other, like I've been doing this entire video, you may never actually notice the quality difference and be completely happy with something like this, even. Again, especially in a pinch. So at the end of the day, you decide, I'm gonna go put this all together and do the same for myself. I'm glad I can make a video out of this, it was fun. I hope it was useful to some of you guys as well, but if not, also let me know if I've missed some setups or workflows you were hoping I was going to do and I didn't, great. Just put it in the comments and I will throw something together if I can and put it in the downloadable package as well. And again, you can get that and just compare everything till your heart's content. And if all of that seems like a lot of work, it is and it was. So <laughs> the other thing you can do is head on over to patreon.com slash Ryan underscore runs underscore Throw two bucks in that tip jar and I'll feel a whole lot better about the whole thing. So either way, as always, thanks for hanging out and see you on the next one.